right everyone so the last thing I did was I did the uh, the release I did Cordova build Android dash dash release so eventually it took one minute 18 seconds and it gave me my my file here Android dash release apk I'm pretty sure I got everything worked out that I wanted to with that so it's the final release so what I'm going to do this is optional but what I'm going to do is uh, notice what I've written further in my instructions after you've got build successful I I'm saying here I'm gonna uh, copy that file or I say move it but copy it to your desktop and name it something like my app one dash release so I'm this is optional but I'm going to put in a um, in a number also in the APK file and have it named dash release it can be named anything but when I'm making various versions of it <coughs> I like to put a version number in the file name. And then I've got, congratulations, you have a release-ready version of your app to distribute. So, to follow that advice there, in my project, the my SDCE project, I'm going inside of the Platforms folder, Android folder, Build folder, Outputs folder, APK folder, and this is what I'm talking about, Android-release. So I'm going to copy that, and copy it or move it. I'm going to copy that and put it on the, on the root, let's see, where do I put it? I'll put it, uh, I'll put it on the root level of my apps folder, let's say. I'm copying it and pasting it somewhere where I can find it is the point. Put it wherever you can find it. So I'm putting it in my apps folder. These are my works in progress folders of my projects, and then there's the final version. Maybe I could make a brand new folder called, you know, ready or release, whatever. But then obviously this name, Android release, doesn't tell me, is this my basic project, my SDCE project, or my test project? So on my notes, I'm just saying we can call it something like my SDCE1 release. So as I make new versions of it, I'll just simply increment the number here, marked as release, so I can quickly see this is the release version, the final finished version of my project. So for the moment then I'm gonna close, you can do this if you'd like, I'm gonna close the command prompt, I won't need to work with it for the moment. So you can either type exit or just close the little X. I'm gonna close some of these other windows to free up some resources. So I've got an app and now I've got um, three big ways that I can get this to people. Uh, one hard way and two easy ways. Um, the easy ways, though, um, are not free. The hard way is free, but it's hard. What we can do is we can set up our own website, victorapps.com, and, and have all of our apps there. We can sell our apps that way. We can give away our apps, no problem. We can charge $2 for the app and keep all of the profits. Because if we go the easy way, which is to use Google... Play or Amazon App Store, they're going to take 30% of the value of your app. So if you're selling a 99 cent app, a dollar app, they're going to keep 30 cents. The more you charge for your app, the more they're going to take. So if you give away your apps, they're still going to take 30%, but what's 30% of zero dollars? Zero. So they're still going to take some money, um, in a sense. Uh, if I go the easy way, if I go for the infrastructure of Google Play and Android App Store, okay, that's why I'm saying I'm going to do it the hard way. I'm going to sell my apps and such through my own website where I can charge a dollar and keep the whole dollar. <laughs> the problem with that is it's hard, not for yourself, for your users, because your users are not going to be able to go to the Google Play Store on their home screen. They're not going to be able to go to the Amazon App Store and click download with the pretty pictures and all of that easy stuff. 
they're going to have to follow instructions that you add on your website to go into the folder that says, I mean the screen remember that we did, open developer properties, tap seven times, turn on USB debugging, blah 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 blah. We're going to scare them and say, you're trying to give me a virus? Why are you telling me to turn on USB debugging? Google popped up to tell me, be careful. So this is why this is not a viable way to sell things on your own. To make your own website and publish your app that way because really only the techie people are going to go through the process of deactivating that protection and then installing the app on their SD card and then putting it on their phone and all of that. Yeah, you're going to keep the whole dollar, but you're also going to lose a lot of customers because they're not going to go through that. The average person wants to go to the app store, search, find, install, the end. So we are going to have to go through an app store, really. Um, doing it your own way, people always ask me, what can I email the app to people? Of course you can. Then email them the instructions to turn off the USB debugging, blah, 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 blah. And some people will, and they're happy, but most people will not. Sometimes people ask me, well, what about making apps for, like, my company intranet? Yeah, you can also use these app stores to publish your intranet app in a way but if you're really going to work with an intranet, you are going to have to give these instructions about turn on USB debugging, side load it on your memory card, and then install it that way. But for most of us, we're going to publish our app on a real store. The easy way. So I said that we've got both of the options for Google Play. and the Amazon App Store. Uh, we're, I'm not going to show you the process of Google Play because you will need to uh, pay $25. Um, it's either $25 or $20. I just saw it and I forgot already. But let's say $25. You're going to need to pay $25 to create an account to, to sell your apps here, even if your apps are free. You're still going to need to pay a one-time fee of $28 to be to have your own app store listing like these guys over here tiny warriors from noodle cake studios you're gonna have your own little store listing about yourself all your apps together and in order to do that you're going to need um, to pay that twenty five dollars so we're not gonna do it this way we're going to instead set up for free the account of um, uh, Amazon App Store. So over at Amazon.com, there's a section for apps and games. Uh, App Store for Android. And so right here, people are selling their apps. There's Pandora, there's Plants vs. Zombies, etc. Big companies, small companies. But we're gonna publish through this particular app store because the big incentive here is that it's all free. You won't get charged to create the developer account, I mean. Um, so no charge for developer account, but they still will take the 30% for the App Store. That part's not free. Uh, so they will take the 30% because it costs money to run this. To run this 24 hours a day in 200 countries with an easy button on their screen to download. But if you're publishing free apps, no problem. So I'll show you here then. We'll start to create our account. You can do this if you'd like or not. Uh, you can do this again for practice or for real. But if we go to developer.amazon.com, this is our portal to access all of these Amazon developer tools, such as selling on our App Store, um, creating in-app purchases, um, creating apps for like their Amazon Fire TV stick, 
if you go to developer.amazon.com, The second option is the one we care about, Amazon App Store. The Amazon App Store allows developers to distribute and sell their Android and HTML5 web apps to millions of customers in nearly 200 countries around the world. Sounds great. And we'll be able to then add in-app purchasing. That's out of the scope of our class. But let's say you have your app for free. We're, we will still also be able to add those little in-app purchases, such as you have bought my book, maybe you want the next chapter 99 cents you want the next chapter 99 cents so people can then buy from your app even though it's distributed for free you can also set up mobile ads which is that your app is completely free but you're gonna have a little ad at the bottom and so you'll get revenue when people click that ad you can also have it built in that well um, you can you can do an in-app purchase to remove ads so for 99 cents they've chosen to remove ads. You've probably dealt with apps like that. You might have even bought ads to unlock that, to remove ads. You can do the same thing. So that's one way to make money, even if you're giving your app away. And other things, Game Circle. But anyway, let's click on Amazon App Store. The link there. This is totally optional, but this is just to tell you, okay, drag your APK here. We're going to analyze it and give you a quick information about how compatible it is and such. And uh, pretty much every app, every app is going to pass because we're using standard code and such. Um, so you could do that if you want, but I'm not going to. Then this screen here is, is still also tempting me. You can do this. You can do that. This is why you want to do this. Uh, look at this Commodore 64, etc. So what we want to do is at the top right, we've got sign in or create free account. Let's click there. At the top right, create free account. It'll ask you then to provide an email or a mobile number. And we're going to say that I'm a new customer. One caveat here. We can create this and then we can delete it. But to delete it, you have to... Um, contact their tech support and ask to be removed. It's not going to be a simple go to settings and click deactivate account. So I've done this before. You have to send an email to them and say you want to shut this down because the app gets sent to people and if you want to remove the app there's no remove button. You have to tell Amazon please remove my app and then they will remove it from the store and delete your account if you'd like. So just one caveat there. If you do create this, you'll need to request to get it deleted if you want to delete it. Or you can, of course, use it. So go ahead then, um, see if I can do this with making up an email address. I'm a new customer. Okay, so I'm a new customer, a new developer. What name? This is going to be the name of you as a person. Later on, we can add the name of like like us as a company. But uh, this is you as the person behind the company. Create a password. It's going to ask us a lot of questions. They're not that complicated. Here it's got three, three big steps. Here's where we're then going to choose our developer company name and such. I'll explain these in a moment, but this will be the information that would display on screen. Some of them are displayed, some of them are not. Some of this information is displayed on screen to users, some of it is not. Then we'll get to a part about app distribution agreement. That's the fine print. And then we've got a part about payments. We'll, we'll see that we can actually skip that, especially if we're going to give our apps away for free. If we are going to make revenue off of our apps, 
there's a longer process that I'm not going to get into where you would then have to provide your social security number and a bank account so that then when you start raking in the money it goes to your bank account. Um, it's pretty straightforward and of, co of course it's totally legit because Amazon is a you know, a 20 year old company on the web. They've just celebrated I believe 20 years, 25 years this year um, and they've been around so they're a legitimate company. You want to be as best as you can also a legitimate publisher, a, de a legitimate developer, a legitimate company on Amazon or Google Play but the great thing is that anyone can create an account like this and give away or sell their apps. You know, uh, teenagers from their bedrooms have made lots of money making cool little apps and selling them on Amazon and Google Play. So whatever you feel here, in a, in a sense, is a bit arbitrary because you don't need to you don't need to get an official business license from City Hall to do this. You don't have to have any special kind of merchant account to collect your money or anything like that you can have the most minimal setup and this will work. Obviously if you've got yourself more set up like a real company that you do have a business license and a tax ID number and all of that, the better. Because re remember, you're going to be making money off of this. And what, and what happens in the United States when you make money? Uh, you get taxed. So you're going to get taxed on your 99 cents, I mean on your 77 cents that you're making off of your apps. So you want to do this as legitimately as possible to uh, you know, get the best tax results. I'm not a, I'm not a uh, CPA or anything like that. I'm not giving any tax advice at all. I'm just giving you my experience, what I've done and for companies and such. For example, here, phone number. Some of these fields are going to show up when people search your app. And so, for example, phone number, you might not want to put in your phone number your own personal cell phone number, it might, you know, show up publicly. So one thing that I can say is you can get a free phone number from Google Voice. So I won't go through the process, but if you go, if you search Google Voice, you go here, you will be able to create a completely free phone number. Perfect for my business. The way that it works, is that the Google Voice is going to be tied to a real phone number, a real phone, but you'll have that phone number as a as a middleman, as your first line of defense before your real phone. And what you could do is you can set that Google Voice number to go directly to voicemail. So you could record a really nice professional sounding welcome to victorapps.net. Please leave a message for tech support. Beep. And then a person leaves a message on the voicemail and then you, you hear it on your phone or on the website or whatever and then call them back and answer their tech support or whatever. So this is one way then, one, one thing that you can do, create a Google Voice number for free that will be your company contact information. Developer name or company name. Uh, so I've just been using this fake company Campos Apps I probably used it before. Let's see if it lets me. Um, you can change all of this stuff, but some of it is harder to change than others. You'll see when you try to do it. But uh, this is the name of, of my company that's going to show up on Google Play. I mean on Amazon App Store and Google Play. So when you have these apps and you're looking at people's profiles like this. This is from martyapps.co. This is a former student. So this is their particular profile and contact info and such. So that's, that's why it's asking you for a company name, developer name, address. Okay, this one Notice it's required. You can technically make it up. One, two, three, fake street. But again, if you're doing this for real, you might want to fill this in as realistic as possible to collect your, 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 your funds and such. One thing that you could do is set up a P.O. box. Now, a P.O. box is not free, but you can go with the least expensive one, which in my neighborhood, um, I believe the cheapest one is like $23 per year. So then you can have a um, P.O. box 
here where you would get any of this official correspondence. And in my local PO box, actually, um, they've implemented this. I don't know if it's nationwide, but on my U.S. Post Office box, um, you are able to actually put the address of the PO of the of the post office itself instead of putting PO box one two three whatever. So then it looks like a real address. So I can put the 830 Coon Drive, and then the 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 unit number is the unit number of the actual P.O. box. So on my post office, that's what you can do, and that'll look much more like a legitimate real store. But this is not free. So it's your choice what to do there, and you can change it later. And then the rest, of course, fill that in. Here's the um, app distribution agreement. Oh, so I scroll down. Oh, it's not that long. Actually, it's that long. And it goes on with this, all of these addenda and changes. But in here somewhere, it's going to say how much this costs, 30%, prohibited actions. You may not reverse engineer, disassemble, or decompile any binary code used in connection with the program, including any program materials we provide you. So if you do any of that stuff, you're in violation, and your account could be removed. Basic terms, royalty, 70% of the list price for the application uh, as of the time of purchase. So you'll get 70%. So you hereby grant us a non-exclusive, irrevocable, irrevocable, royalty-free, worldwide rights use to use, reproduce, distribute, reformat, modify, create excerpts from, promote, advertise, transmit, and publicly display and perform in any and all digital and other formats the product information for promotional purposes in connection with the program, except that we will not use any trademarks you provide for purposes of, ups of us selling an app after the withdrawal of the app is described, as described, and to your apps and other content in order to create limited promotional excerpts and in order to allow end users to try your apps for a limited time without downloading or installing them. So again, that's all that fine print there that you may or may or may not agree with. If you don't agree with it, don't create an account. There's no way around it. So that's why you have this. You can read it, print it out, Read it by a, by a, a nice, uh, cozy fireplace with a glass of wine, and then click Accept. So I'm going to say I did read it. I accepted it. Step three, one big question. Do you plan to monetize your apps? Methods may include charging for the apps, or selling in-app items, or display ads from Amazon Mobile Ad Network. So at the moment, if I say no, I'm done. If I say yes, I'm not done. I have to fill in all of this stuff. Okay, we want to. We Amazon wants to pay me for my app and such. So I need to fill in all this information here, which I'm not going to. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, we're gonna get an electronic funds transfer. What's the name of my bank? Who's the account holder? What kind of a bank is it? Is it? checking savings or business uh, what's their bank routing number you have to look that up for your own bank what's your account number for that great save and continue and then you're going to be able to get money from your from your app sales from in-app purchases or from ad dis display ads so there's no way around this this has to be filled in legitimately I can't make up bank numbers uh, I wish I could. So I'm going to put no. This can be changed later, of course. If I do decide later on I'm going to try to make money off of this, I can go to one of these settings in here and activate that. Save and continue. And that's it. I'm an Amazon app developer.
I have here now various screens that we'll look at next time to start to uh, publish our app for real. There's of course plenty of documentation to look at and read and updates and support and reports and everything. But at this point I've created an account and when we come back next time, okay, I've got an app, I've got an account, what's the next step? I need to create a store listing, so we'll deal with that. We'll publish our app for real, and then our app will be available to for everyone to download. Pretty exciting. So we'll end the lecture at this point, do some lab time. When we come back next time, we'll take the final leap, publish, and our app will be real.